we want to continue discussing We look at complex complex circuit analysis using uh, using mesh mesh analysis. Okay. It's it's not really complex. It's just two or three loops. Okay. And you can if you follow it for one or two loops, you can definitely do it for three loops, three or more. Now, just a reminder: your exam is coming up. First test is coming up. Feb sixth, right? That's when you want it. So it will be chapter two, all of chapter two. Fair enough. Next time. And uh, I will have assignment two up on up on blackboard today. Okay. I think there is lecture number six. I'm not sure, but so what we will discuss is You'll be given something like this. You have voltage source, resistor, an inductor, let's say another resistor, capacitor. So you'll be given something like this and you'll, ask, you'll be asked to let's say find answer function and 2 of s over e of s. Okay. This is a simple question. So what you're going to do is if you're given the first thing you, you will obviously not write down the question again in your question paper or your assignment, right? So what you're going to do is you're just going to start with step 1. And you're going to redraw the circuit with impedances and other circuit variables. So the impedance for the resistor is R1, just R1, this is R2, right? Impedance for inductance is Ls, right? Whatever the inductance value into the variable S and for capacitance it will be 1 over Cs, whatever the capacitance value. The variables would be represented as here it would be I2 of S and here it would be I1 of S and the voltage would be V of S. Why is I2 of S considered to be the output? It, I can give you I1 or I2. It could either be either one. Okay? So we're saying we're Trying to solve for the circuit to be a mesh analysis, we're finding the transfer. Right. So, that's so we are interested in, let's say, we are interested in figuring out what is the current flowing. If we, yeah. for a 
given input. Our interest could be I1 or our interest could be I2. When you say mesh analysis, yes, we mean that find the transfer function between output and input. Right? It could be either I1 or it could be I2. It will always, the transfer function is always between one output and one input. So, for example, the, when we talk about systems, there are size of systems means single output, single, single input, single output systems. There could be MIMO systems, which means multiple inputs, multi, multiple outputs. Transfer function applies for is for uh, is the ratio of one output over one input. Okay, you can separate out. If you see our the the differential equations we have arrived at are coupled, right? You understand what coupled means? You cannot quite separate. Uh, we'll we'll look at what coupled means over here. Okay, just just look at this. So this is step one. Now you would apply as for step two. You would generally apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, right? So mesh one. What do you have? You have R1 plus L of L. Alright, let me split this up first. So, this is how you are going to do. Generally, your mesh one is. how your KVL uh, reads. You have V of S is equal to voltage drop in the resistor plus voltage drop in the inductor. Right? This is the input voltage and this is the voltage drop. The sum of voltages in a mesh it should be equal to 0. That is what your and switch off voltage loss. Now, if this VR1 of S would be just R1 into S, right? This would be L S into I1 of S. Minus I correct, and this will be equal to V of S. All right. So you have I. See when when the current flows through the inductor. The, what is the total current flowing through the inductor? You have I1 flowing in this direction, I2 flowing in the other direction, right? It depends on how you write the current. If you split the current here itself, saying you want to split the current this, whatever current is going in would be split into this and this, then you don't need to write it that way. But here we are saying the current flowing through the loop is I1 and current flowing through loop 2 is I2. So the current flowing through this element is I1 minus I2. Uh, 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 You're right. So this is I1. Plus. Okay. So generally you would write this as R1 of S plus L of S into I1 of S minus L of S into I is equal to V of S. 
your goal is to figure out i2 over v of s this is a convenient way of writing it to get to that goal okay mesh 2 again what you are going to have is what is the applied voltage here Mesh two. The applied voltage is whatever is the opposite. There is there is no applied voltage here. Zero. You see that? Voltage is applied to this applied voltage. To this mesh is this, right? Okay. This is applied voltage. To this mesh there is no applied voltage. So you set it zero. Right. You just set it equal to. Zero. Okay. So when you set it equal to zero, you have zero is equal to R two into I two of S plus one over C of S into I two of S plus LS. So here, what you want to get is. I two of s minus I one of s. Okay. Because you are dealing with I two, now you have to look look at the uh, look at it the other way. I two is flowing in your in the inverse direction. I one is flowing in inverse direction. Okay. Now if you rewrite this again, we want to write it in I one I two V of s. So you, what do you have for I one? You have yes L of s. I one of s plus R two plus one over C of s plus S R two of s. So compare. You have to compare. This is let's say A and B. Okay. A and B are simultaneous equation. Okay. So you are. It's something like this. A X plus B Y. You see that? So x and y are the variables. Here the variables are this is like x. Okay. And this is y. We don't call this as a variable because this is an applied input. It's it's something which you can. Control, right? So this is not not quite a variable. It's something which you control. It's applied. It's input. So these are the variables. This is the output. But these are two different outputs. Now, if you look at these, how do you solve? What is the method for solving this? You know how to solve two simultaneous equations. You could use Cramer's. So you use. And we have looked at using Cramer's rule for uh, for previous trans, uh, translation systems. We have
the last term. Alright? So when you have something like this, if you want to solve for x, if you want to solve for x, you would have a, b, c and f, okay, over delta, and delta here is just a, b, b, c. Got it? Do you see that what you are trying to do here is, what does the symbol mean? Determinant. Matrix is generally you have a square bracket. Okay? So this means the determinant. So what you have done here is, you have taken these two. You have replaced these with the right hand side. You replace the B and C with C and F. You are solving for X. If you are solving for Y, what you are going to do is, you are going to replace A and B with C and F. Got it? Very simple, right? And delta is just the determinant of this A, B, B. If you are solving for y, you would write a, d and sorry, this is this is actually d, right? Keep this is what you saying? Make sense? So you just keep these two and you replace these with these. If you are solving for y, you keep these two, whatever the variables are associated with y, you replace the this with the constant. So you solve for x, so then you do the same thing which you would solve for y. Huh? You solve, you solve for x, right? I am saying if you are solving for x, you do this. If you are solving for y, you do the other. Right. So here you are solving, you are solving for solving for y. Right? Actually, it's the other way around. It's the other way around. Okay. That's what I was saying. So you need to divide the last. It's not Okay? See, so we're solving for y, you keep the x coefficients. And you're solving for x, you keep the y coefficients. In here, we, so we need to solve for y. We need to solve for i2. Right? So if you just, and this is how you are going to solve for y2. What you are going to get here is i2. Quite simply, i2 over s over b. See, what are you going to get? So I2 is equal to what? Minus what we have? L or plus LS into B of X over delta, right? So it is this minus this, correct? That's the determinant. This minus this. So this minus becomes plus, okay? And from this you can simply say I2 over S got it So your delta will be, if you want to solve it further, your i2 of s over b of s will be m e s over what would delta be? 
delta would be this minus this, right? Inductor, L is inductor. Okay. C is capacitor. So the S is not equal to the capacitor. S is a variable. It's a complex variable, the Laplace variable. So I uh, one of x is still the s is still a variable, correct? Which one? I uh, one of x. No, this is a function of time. I okay. told you, right? This yeah. when we when we started, I think I uh, emphasized this part. This is like a time variable. This is a function of time. You have to look at it that way. This is a frequency variable or a complex variable, the Laplace variable. This is a function of that frequency. So this is what you want to get, and what what I what uh, what I've done here is just write it as a polynomial. The denominator is a polynomial. Do you see it as a polynomial? Second order polynomial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything is constant. You realize that, right? R R one R one R two L and C, right? Only S is the variable. Okay. Now this is one of the approaches. What is the other approach for solving this? Do you remember what we solved for uh, when we did translational systems? Do you remember the impedance approach? We did the impedance approach, right? So we'll, we'll take a look at the impedance approach. Can I erase this part? We're done with this? Okay. Let's, let's take a picture if, you, if you're not done. Got it? This one? So when we are doing an impedance approach, it gets even simpler. Okay. So what we do is, Sum of impedances connected to mesh one into I one of the minus Common to mesh one and mesh two is equal to sum of 
slide. Is this clear? So, sum of impedances connected to mesh 1 into I1 of S minus sum of impedances common to mesh 1 and mesh 2 into I2 of S equal to sum of applied voltages. Okay. Let us apply this to mesh 1. So, what are the sum of impedances? Look at mesh 1. What do you see? R1 and L of S, right? So you have R1 plus L S to I1 of S minus. What is the sum of impedances common to mesh 1 and 2? LS. And what is the applied voltages? Now again, so this is the first one. And the second one will And this is actually negative. All we are trying to do is we are trying to write get these two variables in the same place. Okay. You can you can simply apply this again. You can say sum of impedances common uh, uh, to connected to mesh two into I2 of S minus sum of impedances common to mesh 1 and 2 into I1 of S. So, we have just flipped that. And then sum of applied voltages. Equal to sum of applied voltages to mesh 2. So, it will be 0. So, you have plus into I2 okay. So, what is the sum of impedances common to M1 and M2? Again, it is just L, LS, right? We have minus LS into I1 of S plus uh, there are three impedances connected to in mesh 2. There are three impedances, right? R2, 1CS plus LS. LS is common, it is applied to mesh 2, right? It is connected to mesh 2. So you have R2 plus 1 over of S plus LS. Right? So this, these are the same A and B. Okay. This impedance 
Impedance method, it is, it is a very simple method. You won't go wrong with this even for three or four meshes. Okay? So you should practice this. It's just a matter of practicing. Alright? Now, in the beginning of the class, we said coupled. You see what is coupled here? Why is the why are these coupled? They are coupled because you see I1 and I2 are part of both these equations. You cannot, they are not independent. If you want to figure out I1, you have to solve them as simultaneous equations. Huh? You have to solve them as simultaneous equations. You cannot take one equation and get I1, one equation and get I2. That is the reason they are coupled equations. So you have to do the same process. You have to do the same process. Again, yeah. Getting to A and B is, uh, there are two methods. But once you get to A and B, you use Kramer's rule. Right? You reapply Kramer's rule, everything will be the same. So if you apply Kramer's rule, you can just again do I2 of S is equal to that over delta. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. So, the part that says sum of impedances common. Right, it will be mesh 2, here it will be sum of impedances connected to mesh 1 minus sum of impedances connected common to mesh 1 and 2 I2 minus sum uh, of impedances connected to 1 and 3 into I3 and so on. Sum of impedances common to so common in between. Uh, mesh 1 and mesh 3. Mesh 1 and mesh 3. Oh, okay. It cannot be common to 3 meshes, right? It will be common between 2 meshes. So you take one. Okay? So you have this. Now the final one is. Oh, sorry. One more question. Okay. So uh -huh. we did it that way. So the second equation. All right, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, okay. I'll just quickly do a three mesh problem, or I'll just give you another example. Let's say you have something like this. Okay. If you have something like this, so you have R1, R2, and then you have, let's say this is L1, L2, and L3, and this is C. So 
there are three meshes here, right? Do you see three meshes? So what you're going to do is, so the first thing you're going to do is, you're going to write the impedance of red. S, this will be S, S, and this will also be And you have I1 of S this just means the flow of current you understand that right yes okay so when you're solving for mesh 1, you have R1 plus R2 plus L1, right? So I1 of this. Now look for mesh 1 and 2. Minus R2 plus L1 I2 of this correct minus look for 1 and 3 so what is common between 1 and 3 R1. just R1 R1 I3 of this equal to got it you have to do the same way for only here it will be minus something here into i1 of s plus this into i2 minus this into i3 equal to so when you are dealing with mesh 2, so what are common between mesh 1 and 2? R2L. R2L, that will come here, right? This would be I, the impedances connected to mesh 2 alone, right? All these elements, elements in mesh 2, the impedances in mesh 2, everything will come here, right? So what is common between I2 and I3? L2S. That element will come here. When you are dealing with, finally when you are dealing with I3, this will be minus, this will be minus and you will have a plus. Right? I3 again, I3 and I1 is R1, I3 and I2 is L2S, just I3 is this L2 and R1. And So you have R1 common between I th uh, mesh 3 and 1. Okay. That's going to come here, right? Into I1 of S. Okay. What is common between 3 and 2? L2 of S, that's going to come here, right? What are the impedances only in mesh 3? This, this, and this. All those are going to come here. Okay, so I'm going to go there. are connected to mesh 3 as well, right? Mm -hmm. these, two these two impedances are connected to mesh 3 as well. So look at mesh. This is mesh two. Huh? This is mesh three. So what is common between them? Huh? L three. What is common between them? Mesh in the sense. Look at this loop. Okay, we are common. We mean the peaks itself or what? So what is the 
common element between this loop and this loop? What is common between this loop and this loop? R2 and? What is common between this and this? 